Hello and welcome to Beulah Land Bible Baptist Church. Again, this is a Sunday morning. We've got November the 11th, 8th, I'm sorry, November the 8th. Thank God for that. Uh, I can get my memory back and stuff. We're glad to have you here with us today as we go through the Bible uh, truths today. I want to talk about the message I've taught, titled is, The Truth Is, The Truth Is. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 17 with me, if you would. John chapter 17. We're glad to have you here with us to, uh, as we look at some truth that's in the Bible about uh, these days that we're living in. And you and I know that we have uncertainty days that's coming along and people doing things and saying things and we're watching for things and looking for things and stuff like that. And uh, just let the Lord help us with some truth today, okay? Let's pray. Father, please, I pray in Jesus' name, help us this morning, help us as we gather around your word help the word become real so, father help christians to realize where we're at what we're doing and preparing us help us to learn to read and to study and show ourselves approved to you father and preparing us for this not this world but for their eternity in heaven and father i pray that you would uh, help the lost to see their need to be saved for father i know that i can't stress enough the importance of why Jesus came and so came to save sinners, Father. I pray you'd uh, speak to a sinner's heart today and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, in John chapter 17, if you're there, say amen. And we're going to go in through the scriptures and help us to, to get something from the Word of God. <clears throat> and he says in John chapter 17, this is Jesus praying, and he says, he says in verse 9, verse 9, he says, I pray for them, not, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, O Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, gave it, that thou gavest me, I kept, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now I come, and now come I to thee, that these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word. The world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. I want you to see that I, the tr passage of Scripture we found is, is that pr Jesus is praying with, with and for his disciples just before his brutal and agonizing death that he was going to face coming and that he knew that he was facing on the cross and at this time the Lord prayed about many things including the disciple relationship with this world that he's talking about here and he and and he makes it very clear that he understands what they're going to have to face he's he he's in, he, he talks about the relationship he says I pray not that thou shouldest take them out. He says, I, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Amen? Now, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Now, he makes it very clear for you and I to understand. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, you might want to look this up when you get a chance. But he makes it clear to them that we're not of this world. This world, we're just a passing through. You remember the song that says, saying he says that uh, I can't remember the words, but he says, uh, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. But, you know, and I see it. Now, Jesus was concerned about his disciples, and he, God is always concerned about his, about his and, and how they would be affected and influenced in this world. And he was worried about the influences that the world is going to drag or put on us, or that we will adopt, or that we will handle, see? Now, he was concerned about them. 
He did not pray that the Father would remove them. He didn't say, I don't want you to remove this world, but he said, but his plan, because God has a plan, he has a purpose for us. When God saved you and I, he saved us when he, because he had something he wanted to do. And when he saved us, one of the first things or the most important thing that you and I do is to glorify God. We're to glorify God. God, when somebody saves you, man, you just can't be thankful enough and just thanking him and glorifying him. He said, praise God. He said, why are you so happy? God saved me. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Praise God. I praise God all the chance I get. It, you know, we're in this old world. This old world is not my home. It's not. And it's turning away from God more and more. You and I, if you're living here and you have any kind of understanding, I'm not talking about little children and stuff, but I'm talking about adults who have an understanding. You can see there's a lot difference in the last, in the, over the years as this world is changing. And, it, and it's changing not for the good, but it's changing for the bad. And we know that it's going to be that way because we read the truth. And the truth is, it ain't gonna get no better here you know I know I can sit here and give you one of those ministry evangelists on there trying to make you feel good and feel happy about yourself but the truth is it ain't gonna get no better here for you and I this is not our own we're not we're not supposed to be comfortable here. we're not supposed to be God had a plan and a purpose for us but he, and also he said he'd never forsake me nor leave me he said I'll take care of you he said I'll meet your needs and I tell you, no matter what rough it gets, how tough it gets, or whatever we go to, or wherever we bend the road, whatever elected official gets in or don't get in, God's still going to be on the throne. God's still going to take care of me. But what we have, God has a plan for us. What we have to understand is that God involves us being in this world. However we are, we are in this world. Jesus wants us to be separated. He wants us to have an influence. But he wants us not to have the world influence us. Not let the world get into us, but let us get into the world. You know, that's an important job. It's an important step. It's important because we are to influence the world in a godly way when this world is trying to, and driving this world to an ungodly way. You know, but Jesus does not want the world to have a huge influence on us. He wants us to have a huge influence on the world. He didn't tell you because the world is getting worse and worse for you to slack or back off or something. He says, hey, keep at it. Stay the course. I'm going to take care of you. We are to be in the world, but not of the world. Jesus prayed that we would be, would not be worldly. You ever heard of people saying, well, he's an awful worldly person. And you and I understand that when you say that somebody's worldly, you understand that it's somebody that agrees with the world, that wants to be like the world, looks like the world, smells like the world, talks like the world, look, tastes like the world. Everything about them is worldly. Well, I'll tell you something. Now, what we have to be careful about, I think Jesus is praying about for us here, is that he doesn't want you and I to get worldly. He doesn't want us to start looking like the world. He doesn't want us to fit in. He wants us to be not fit. He wants us to be a square and a square peg in a round hole. He wants us. There's a difference in this. We are in this world, but we're not of the world. Jesus prayed in there and say in First Peter chapter two verse eleven. I told you you look this up. I I won't have time to quote it to you, but the Peter says in there. He says that we are strangers and pilgrims in this world. You know. And, and, you know, those squirrels not my home. I'm just a passing through. He said, we're, Peter said in there, he says, you're just a stranger and you're a pilgrim. A stranger is a foreigner. You know, one that is unacquainted, one not that's not admitted to, to be a part of. We're, we're strangers. What we're doing, what we see in this world, when we see and read the Bible and we see that there's the, what the world's doing, should be strange to us. But what we're doing and what we're doing in the Bibles to the world, we should be strange to them. We're strangers. We're str we're foreigners. We're <clears throat> we're someone who is not acquainted with what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. We we're not we don't fit in. We're strangers there. I thank God I'm a stranger. I, I don't want to fit in with this world. I don't want to fit into those things. Somebody told me the other day, he says, Oh, 
uh, I came by and he was a good friend of mine and uh, he said and I came to the door and I had on my shirt tied and I was preparing for my Wednesday night services at church he said whoo look at you all spiffed up and I said I'm not spiffed up I'm just I'm just dressing the part that God's given me I'm trying to look the best I can for the for the for uh, for Jesus Christ and uh, and he said well you know our pastor he don't wear ties he don't do this he wears a t-shirt you know and I and I think about it, I said you know he's trying to fit I'm not picking on this guy's pastor okay but he's not trying to, he's trying to fit in I'm I don't want to fit in I don't want to look like the world I I don't. I'm not dressed with a tie because I think this is what I look the best with. This is how I want to, I, I think it's uh, impressive, not impressive, but I think it, it's important, that's the word I'm looking for, important that we to give God our best. You know, I, it troubles me, and I've said this many times, it troubles me when you have women that come to church and they look like they just got out of bed and they can't drug them, drug them through things, but yet they get up every morning and put their makeup on and go to go to work every day, or they get up in the morning and Hey, listen, God deserves your best. If you are to, you are not wearing makeup to work, wear your makeup to church. And you are not wearing your dirty, filthy, ungodly clothes to church, you ought to wear your best. You know, if that if the dirty, filthy clothes is the best you got, praise God, wear that. But wear something, cover up. We don't want to be running around like the world, look half naked, half uh, carrying on with all the stuff of the world in there, you know. <clears throat> it's troubling times we live in, but we're strangers. Second Peter, First Peter tells us that, that we're strangers. Not only we're strangers, but we're pilgrims. Pilgrim is a someone who's a wanderer or a traveler, one that is temporary. <clears throat> I don't talk much about my grandchildren as much. I love them to death, and, but uh, I, I think about my grandson Grayson all the time, and and I pray for him and stuff, and and he, he he's kind of. One, he's he's autistic and he he kind of wanders around a little bit, and I thought he's in his own little world, you know, sweetest kid you ever, seen. and he's just lovable and so he's in, but he's 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 wandering, he doesn't fit in. I thought we ought to be more like that. We ought to be, you know, you can't help but notice it that he does, you know, he's wandering. You can't help but notice it. He's traveling through. He's enjoying what he's got and stuff. But it's only temporary. Then he moves on. And I thought, we ought to be more like him. We ought to be just wanderers. We ought to be travelers. We ought to, it, it, everything we have is just temporary. We don't have it for long. You know, it's clear to me that we're not to be like this world we live in. But what is it, what is it that separates us from the world? What is it that should separate us from the world? The answer is answered in verse 17 of our, of our text. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. To sanctify means to make holy, to purify, to consecrate, to set apart. Where sanctified is that you and I, uh, Jesus wanted us, us, you and I, and he wanted his disciples to be separate from the world and to be a holy people unto God. You know, what makes it, what's the difference? The, the, is, is that we're sanctified with the truth. Here's the truth. Now, not to live unholy, nor to be a part of the unholiness of this world. We're not to be unholy. We're not to be a part. We're pilgrims. We're, we're strangers. And the truth is, is we're not supposed to fit in. That's the title of the message. The truth is, is we're not supposed to fit in. I don't fit in. I don't think the way they think. I don't act the way they think. I don't talk the way they talk. I don't dress the way they dress. You shouldn't either. It's not to live unholy as part of it and not let the unholiness of this world get a part of you. Sanctify it. Make yourself, purify yourself, consecrate, set yourself apart from this world. Remember this? We're preparing for our homecoming. While we're here, we're preparing for a homecoming. What I'm doing here is I'm getting ready here for eternity in heaven. I, that requires some things. It requires me to do some studies. It requires me to do some work. And to, I have a desire. And it requires some work. And that, I, 
I'm studying. The Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved." What I'm trying to, what I'm reading the Bible, what I'm trying to do is, is get all this and put it inside of me and prepare me. You know, some folks when they die, they go to heaven, but they'll have to change some books they read all the time. They have to change the music they listen to all the time. Listen, I'm trying to get all that down here prepared so that when I get up there, it'll be a smooth transition. I, I want to be ready for I'm looking forward to heaven. And you are too, too, if you're saved. And listen to me. The opposite is to prepare for hell is nothing has been has to be done and nothing has to be required of you. You're already qualified to go to hell. Jesus didn't come in here. The truth is, Jesus didn't come here to die but on the cross so that you'd go to hell. He died so you could go to hell. When we read the Bible, we read the truth about sin. We read about love. We read about marriage. We read about how we train our children. We read about, it's all found in the Bible. It's, found, it's keeping ourselves. We learn how about how to be honest and how to be moral, how to have friendship, how to have a vocation, how to, how to be a part and, and keeping our words pure and our hearts pure and keep our eyes on Jesus glorifying him and preparing our hearts for the things that are above not things that are above. if we're living according to the word of God we will if you're going to live according to God you will live separate from the world there will be a difference you know when somebody leaves their house on a Sunday morning I like to be able to see the difference in the way they were. You look at them and say, well, they must be going to church. So why is that? Well, they're dressed a little better and they're carrying a Bible. You know? I think that's living separate, you know? The, the lost do not have any respect for the Bible, but they, what are they going to carry is something they don't have any respect for no care for? You know? They have no desire to live according to it. They, but they want to fit into the world they're in. You know, it's a it's tr it's a trying time raising children these days because children are at church and mom and dad and trying to do and raise them and teach them these things and then they go into the schools and they want to try to fit in there and the reason they try to fit in today seems like because there's a lot more bullying going on because you're being bullied because you don't fit in because you're not the same you don't look the same you're different color you're different height you're skinny you're fat you're ugly you're pretty. You got curly hair, you got straight hair. There's just all kinds of things to do in there. That, but, but they, and they want to fit in. But the truth is, the truth is, is that God was, doesn't want us to fit in. He says you're in this world, but you're not of this world. The truth is, in found in John chapter 8, verse 32, the Bible says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I want to be free. The truth is, is I may not be free while I'm here. I may have some limitations. I may have some problems. I may have some uh, difficulties. I may have some issues with my health, my things like that. But I'm set free from the Word of God, with the Word of God. Now listen to me, okay? If you're not saved, and folks, we know better. If you are saved, you know better. You know, you know if you're trying to fit in or if you're not trying to fit in. You know the truth. And let me tell you this, if you're not saved, you know better. You know you know that you've sinned. You know that you've sinned because you've sinned of some sort. You've, you're a sinner. You know that lying's a sin. You know cheating's a sin. You know killing's a sin. Adultery's a sin. You know all that. You, and you know that you've done those things. Maybe not one, all of them, but one of them. Praise the Lord that you, and I need to tell you something. If you're not saved, praise the Lord you do know this. You know that whether you admit it, whether you want to or not, you know this because you know that means that you can be saved. That's the greatest miracle of it all. It's because I do know. Because I do know the truth. The truth is, you know. And because of it, I can be saved. You can be saved. The Bible says, For all have sinned shall come short of the glory of God. There's none that's righteous, no, no. We, we all sin. I, from the time that you... When you're born, you're brought into this world, you're just a dirty, rotten sinner. I've got grandbabies that are one and two years old that, you know, that, got, that, tell, that tell me a lie and don't think nothing of it. They do things, they say things and stuff, you know. But they hide from things, they make mistakes just like that. And because they've sinned, all have sinned. 
and you know when they do it at that young age, they do it because it's in their nature to do that. But there comes a time when your life, when you grow up, when you realize, hey, that's wrong. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to. You know, I can remember when the boys were growing up, I, I'd ask them a question. I said, now don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. Why? Because sometimes it's easy to lie. I had a fill of work from me one time, and, and uh, that told, I told him, I said, you know, every time I, I, I know you're lying, he says, how's that? He said, because your lips are moving, you know. Some people rather lie than to tell you the truth because they just rather lie. But because that we've sinned, there's a payment for it. Because we've done something wrong, there's a, there's a, a payment for it. The payment, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. If we got any time you do something wrong, there's a consequences. There's a payment for it. If you're driving 35 and 20 miles on, you pull over. There's a consequence. There's a payment for it. And the payment of our sin, because we were sinners, would mean we would die. The wages of our death, the wages of sin is death, meaning that we would die and go to hell. Die. But Jesus made that payment for you. He says, "But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." The gift God has offered us is Jesus says, I made the payment for you. You don't have to pay me. All you got to do is take me, trust me, ask me. Jesus said, and the Bible tells us, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know it sounds simplistic, but I thank God it was because I remember the day. He said, Lord, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I know one thing. I don't want to go to hell. I'm going to ask you, please, Lord, come in my heart and save me. Be my Savior. And he did. And it's something changed. I became a new creature in Christ because that was my heart desire. You are or not. If you're here and you're under my voice and you can't you don't know Jesus, it ought to be your desire to be saved. And you can be saved. Just call upon Jesus and he will save you. Thanks again for being with us. We appreciate you. And may the Lord bless you until we meet again. Bye bye.